Hey, I thought I'd make a video on UTXO management. This isn't well understood and needs to be understood a lot better than it is. Um, so let's explain something. Imagine uh, there's an accountant, a man that sits down and writes down every transaction that happens anywhere. So you want to spend a dollar and you have a dollar and uh, you're buying something that costs a dollar. And when you do it, this man has to write um, Steve spent one dollar doing this. Now imagine you buy something that costs two dollars and you had two one dollar bills. When you spend them, he has to write two entries instead of one. He says, right, this one dollar bill got spent and that one dollar bill got spent, making a total of two dollars. That's twice as much work for him, right? Now imagine you want to spend a hundred one dollar bills. That man now has to write a hundred one dollar bill entries into this book. It takes him a hundred times longer than one. Now, supposing you just only had an a hundred dollar bill or two fifty dollar bills, that would be a lot less work for him, right? Because he'd only have to write one line or two lines. This is how Bitcoin's blockchain works. And it has nothing to do with the amount of money you're spending. It's the amount of inputs inside a transaction. This is an utterly important concept. Spending $2 worth of Bitcoin can be more expensive than spending a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. It literally just comes down to how many inputs there are, which is analogous to how many items of fiat you're spending. Spending three $1 bills is more expensive than spending a $100 bill, even though $100 is a lot more money than $3, because it's about how many things that guy has to write down. You're paying for his time, essentially. In Bitcoin, you're paying for block space. And the more inputs your transaction has, the more block space you're using. So the reason this is such a problem is because there's a lot of people buying small amounts of Bitcoin out there. And every time you buy a small amount of Bitcoin, you get a small bill, essentially. You buy 50 bucks every week or something worth of Bitcoin. You're creating a $50 UTXO each time. And that doesn't all stack into one big UTXO. And when you go to spend it, Supposing you save, you do it 100 times, you now have uh, $5,000 worth of Bitcoin, but it's made up of 150 dollars sized UTXOs. And that means you have the guy has to write 100 different entries down when you spend them. Whereas if you consolidate them all into one $5,000 UTXO, he only has to write one entry in when he goes to spend them. So the trick with Bitcoin and UTXO management is consolidate when transaction fees are cheap. That means the guy doesn't have much he's doing right now when he's writing entries into that book. So I need, I'm going to hire him now to turn all of my $50 bills into a $5,000 bill. I'm going to get him to do that now. And what that means is you create a giant transaction called a consolidation where you take all of your inputs, which are all of those bills, and you turn them into one giant new bill. Then when you go to spend that new bill, it will be an a hundredth of the cost, at least for the input data. This is super important to understand. The trade-off with it is, if one of the $50 came from a, you know, a regulated exchange that you bought with the, you know, your income that is all healthy and you know, you're declaring it all and paying the right taxes on it and all that stuff, and the, another $50 bill came from some you know, drug deal you did in some, you know, you you killed some guy and you sold his organs in, on the third world in Thailand or something like that. If you consolidate those two lumps of money, they turn into one thing and people looking at the chain can go, hey, that guy whose name and address I know because he bought some Bitcoin on a regulated exchange is also the guy from that illegal affair that we now know about because, you know, everyone got arrested and we found out about it. There's Bitcoin as a network allows you to link things. Um, and if you ever create a link in the blockchain between different UTXOs by consolidating them or receiving to the same address, that will undermine any sort of privacy or separation you have between different uh, things of economic activity you did. So you have to be aware of that. That's the trade-off. But um, start thinking about privacy and maintaining your anonymity in another context um, after understanding basic UTXO management. 
because basic UTXO management is not there. Is uh, We're not there when it comes to understanding of this. Most Bitcoiners aren't really familiar with it. If you receive multiple amounts of Bitcoin to the same address, it doesn't all turn into one UTXO. Those are each different UTXOs, even though they're all at the same address. So if you send me a Bitcoin address and I send you you know, one Bitcoin, then I send you five Bitcoins, then I send you 15 Bitcoins, then I send you half a Bitcoin. That doesn't all turn into one UTXO. You now have four or five UTXOs, and that will be five, four or five times more expensive to spend than if it had all been just one amount. And it's on you to look at your wallet, label all these UTXOs, and say, right, I have, you know, a $45 UTXO here, I'm never going to spend that unless sats are, unless fees on the chain are down to less than three sats per byte. And if they are, I'm going to take that $45 UTXO, that $8 UTXO, that $20 UTXO. I don't mind cross-contaminating them all publicly. I don't mind them all being known that they're all one entity that owns them, me. I'm going to combine them all into one $90 UTXO which in a transaction fee environment where it's costing me $2 to spend any UTXO, $90 is worth it, but $8 isn't. I don't want to spend $2 to spend an $8 UTXO. It's a waste of time. It's such a high cost as a, you know, the percentage of what the fee is relative to the amount of Bitcoin there are is, it's horrible. You don't want to pay a 25% transaction fee. So you need to be intelligent about this. You need to look at the blockchain and go, Right, I have, you know, my life savings is $40,000 at one UTXO. Great, that's going to be fine in almost all environments. Even if I have to spend $100 worth of Bitcoin to ever spend it, that's fine. But that's, you know, one UTXO with a large amount. That's the healthiest relationship to have, right? But you don't want to spend, if you want to send someone 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin, you don't want to send from that 40,000 sat UTXO because they can look at the chain and go, this guy has $40,000 worth of Bitcoin. So you'll want to do something intelligent, like break off $1,000 from that 40,000 sat UTXO to a new address, naturally, to a new UTXO of size $1,000. Then you want to coin join it, which might sound a bit, you know, that might, I might lose some of you here, but you're never going to break that link between the $40,000 and that $1,000 unless you do that. You coin join it. Now it's worth $990 instead of 1000 because of whatever fee you had to pay to coin join it. But now you have a clean UTXO worth $990. And this $50 thing you want to buy, you're no longer exposing the fact that you have $40,000 worth of Bitcoin because you broke the on-chain link. And you still have a spendable UTXO. You spend that $990 UTXO, you create two new ones, $50 for the guy you're buying something from, and $940 UTXO to you again. Great. It's still only one UTXO from your perspective. That's good. Um, what you don't want to be doing is being in a situation where you naively don't understand how this works. And you want to buy something that costs 100 bucks. And you have $100 worth of Bitcoin, but it's made up of tiny UTXOs all worth a few dollars each. Then you go to spend your $100 worth of Bitcoin and it costs you an absolute fortune in transaction fees because it's made up of so many small UTXOs. You have to be intelligent about that. And in order to be intelligent about this and consolidating UTXOs without ruining your on-chain privacy, that requires some sophistication in how you do this stuff. First and foremost, you must label every UTXO. This one came from that purchase I did on ShakePay. This one came from that couch I sold on Facebook Marketplace. This one came from a friend sending it to me five years ago. This one came from a refund I got buying something somewhere, right? Label them all. And then if you're happy cross-contaminating them all, that's fine. If you're not, don't combine those UTXOs. Find economic activity that you don't mind being cross-correlated or linked in some way consolidate it all but also make sure you have some small utxos as well because they can be useful too if you don't want to betray too large an amount so it's you need some small ones you need some medium ones you need some big ones 
If you're an absolute whale and you have 10,000 Bitcoins, you don't want to be making payments from UTXOs that large because then you're telling everyone you interact with, hey, I'm a walking, talking bank without any sort of physical security and I have billions of dollars that I'm able to unilaterally spend without anyone being able to prevent me. I have complete freedom, so come and you know hold my family hostage and force me to send you all this stuff and you know there's nothing I can do about it. No good right? Don't get in that situation. That's why you need some reasonable sized UTXOs, not enormous ones. There's probably an upper limit to how big they need to be. So thousands of dollar UTXOs are usually going to be fine when it comes time to spend them, even in high transaction fee environments. So you might have, uh, you know, it might cost you $10 to send a transaction on the Bitcoin network. That's all right. Your UTXOs are all two, three thousand dollars worth. That's fine. And maybe there's not much reason to go above that. If you really have millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, maybe it's not worth splitting them into thousands of UTXOs of a couple of thousand dollars each. That's not worth it. Maybe go for $10,000 each. So you only have hundreds rather than thousands of UTXOs. Something like that. But you've got to find what works for you and you've got to know what you're doing with the system. But the worst thing is, and this is really sucks because it affects the poorest people in the system, the people that are DCAing tiny amounts of Bitcoin, those are the people that are going to get bit the hardest. Because remember, there's that man who has to write down every unit you spend. Like if you're spending 10 $1 bills, he has to make 10 entries. And that is 10 times more expensive than making one entry. One entry can be you spending a billion dollars. And why would that be 10% of the price? when it comes to fees of spending $10 doesn't make any intuitive sense, but that's how it works. Every unit of currency you spend in the system represents data you have to put in the chain. So you can spend a fortune on transaction fees with a tiny amount of Bitcoin, or you can spend virtually nothing with a massive amount of Bitcoin, just due to how many UTXOs are getting spent in the transaction. All about UTXOs, those are units of currency. Uh, I'm not going to get into privacy anymore on this because it's. I, I just want to keep this simple. Hopefully that helps some of you and um, make sure you're aware of this. If you're stacking small amounts of Bitcoin, don't get burnt this way. Don't have millions of UTXOs because they'll all be unspendable. You'll get wiped out in transaction fees and you won't have anything like the Bitcoin you think you do. And if you're worried that you messed this up, now is the time to fix it. It's a weekend. The fees are three sats per byte. This is about as cheap as it's ever going to get. If you have hundreds of UTXOs, it's going to cost you multiple dollars to consolidate all that. But that's a lot better than hundreds or thousands of dollars it would cost you in a more reasonable fee environment. And one day the fees will be higher than they are now. So fix it now well, and get a good understanding of it and get in good habits. Always be aware of what your UTXO sets looking like, not how many Bitcoins you have. That's not the same thing. All right. Thanks.